Hello. In this introductory video tutorial, we'll be creating a basic GIMP plugin in Python to help us create a rainbow. I'm assuming that you already have GIMP and Python foo up and running, so let's just jump straight to the code. First of all, create a new file in the GIMP plugins folder. I'm going to call mine spindup.py. Next, we need to make the file executable. I'm going to do this by calling chmod 755 and the name of the file. Next, we need to import the gimpfu modules from the gimpfu package and declare our main function where our plugin logic will go. For now, this we'll leave this empty. Okay, next we need to register the plugin with Python foo. First is the name of the plugin. Next, a brief description. And finally, a longer description. Next comes the plugin author, the copyright owner, the year, and now the menu entry. So this is going to be under filter, distorts, spin dub. By calling image here, we tell GimpFu that we want to apply the plugin to the current active image. Spin up. Okay. Why don't we call this spin duplicates? Okay. Next, the color space. By specifying the star, that means that we apply it to all types of images. And then the input <coughs> uh, input arguments for our function. For now, we can leave this empty because, as we called image before here. Python foo will automatically uh, pass in the Im uh, image and layer ob objects. Next, the return values, which are empty. And then, the name of our function. Now we need to call main to start up our Python foo script. Okay, so that looks good. Why don't we see if the sent there's now an entry in the menu for our plugin distorts spin duplicates that looks good and I'll open this back up now the first thing we're going to do is create the basic code to duplicate the layer and rotate it in order to do that, we need to have some sort of function reference. Under help, procedure browser is a list of all the functions that you have available to you. We start off by calling gimp layer copy. Let's take a look at what this does. This creates a new layer, so it copies the layer, and the parameters are the layer to copy and, uh, and the alpha channel of the copied layer. And then it returns a new layer. So won't we first of all create a new layer, and then want this to be this layer, the previous layer, and then now we want the alpha channel to be whatever layer currently has. So why don't we now type in alpha and see. Okay, so GIMP drawable has alpha. So that's the function we want because it returns a Boolean value whether the current layer 
or the drawable has an alpha channel. pdb.gimp drawable has alpha on the layer. Okay. So now we need to add the layer to the image. First of all, the name of the image, or the image object, the layer that we want to add, the group, and the position. By setting group to none and the layer position to negative one, it will automatically add the new layer to the position one above the currently active layer. Okay, now let's rotate it. So we're going to be calling GIMP item transform rotate. So PDB dot GIMP item transform rotate. Note that this returns the item that is rotated. So therefore we need to actually and does not actually rotate in place, so we need to set new layer to be equal to this. Now the item that we want to rotate, so new layer, the angle in radians, so why don't we make this 0.5. Uh, auto center is whether the uh, rotation is around the selection center. We want this to be false. Now the center of rotation. For now, why don't we make this 343, 340, and 375. Okay, so now we should have a basic plugin that rotates this by 0.5 radians. Distorts, spin, duplicates. Ah, uh, error. Oh, it's missing parenthesis. That might be it. GIMP item transform rotate not found. GIMP item transform. Ah, missing an S. Okay, so now we can see that it created a new layer and rotated it. Okay, so that's all good, but now we'd like to be able to specify the center of rotation. In order to do this, we need to pass in two more arguments. Why don't we call these x center and y center? Now we need to pass in these arguments by de declaring them here. So these are going to be float values. and it's the name and then a brief description um, and the default value Okay, so now let's try it again. Filters. Okay, so now why don't we set this to something like 450. Oh, right, we didn't change this value to X center and Y center. Okay. I should fix that. And now rotate it around a point somewhere out here. Cool, so that seems to work well. Next, why don't we repeat it for a certain number of steps and also specify the angle. So 
we can say angle steps. And why don't we pass those in now? So this is also another float. And this is going to be in degrees. So we will need to be doing a little bit of conversion. Why don't we make the default value 90? Call the number of steps. Okay. Looks good. And now we need to actually change this to angle times, and we need to say you, we need to use pi, so won't we import math? Say math.pi. Okay, so divide it by 180, the number of steps that we take, and multiply it by. Okay, so this is for a single step. Now we need to also do this for the number of times that we want to, for the number of layers that we want. So why don't we say for x in range steps and we can multiply this by x plus 1 0, 2 steps. Okay. And now we should have something that works. Maybe not. Sometimes we need to restart GIMP for things to work after changes like this, so why don't we Try that first. And recent filters, distorts, and spin duplicates. Okay, that looks better. 90, 10. Why don't we set this to 45 and 20? And we can rotate this around 370 or 345 and 3 345 and 375. We can hit okay. So that looks good. We have a 45 degree angle and it has made 20 new layer 20 new layers, I think. Now, oh, but when we undo, we have to actually undo the creation of every single layer. It's not what we want. So, in order to fix this, we can call pdb.gimp image undo group start and then the image. So, this bundles the undo steps into one. There's also a corresponding end function. And now let's see if this works. We show spin duplicates. Okay, that looks good. So now if we were to make this, uh, why don't we say 180? And we can make this value 100. And of course, there are more efficient ways of doing this, but I, I think this is a good introductory step towards learning how this stuff works. Of course, the algorithm is very slow, but now we have our nice rainbow. I think that basically sums up our tutorial.